Are MMOs just wasting our time? Well, a while ago I created a review of Black Desert Online and in this review I played the game for more than 70 hours and gave my opinion based on that amount of time played. The video received very positive feedback and a decent amount of views, but there were some comments about me not playing the game long enough to give a proper review. And although I could not play every single bit of the game, which I explicitly mentioned, I'm still convinced that 70 hours should be enough to give a proper review of a game. Most game journalists don't even play a game for that long before writing their review. And keep in mind that 70 hours are almost two full work weeks. Some users claimed that I should at least play the game for 500 hours before I gave my review, but if I would do that I would have really loved the game and my review would be biased. And I would probably ignore all the flaws in the game. In my opinion that would lower the quality of the review. I also mentioned, but not criticized, the fact that you have to grind a lot. You'll have to slay the same enemies for hours to gain a single level. And although some might like that, it's just not my cup of tea. But if I had to play a game for that long to get to the fun part and get so much stuff done, I really begin to wonder, are MMOs just wasting our time? MMOs can take up so much of our time and give us, in some cases, so little in return. Think about grinding enemies for days for that specific item, or never-ending treadmills for gear that becomes obsolete in the next patch. Things like that. But when are MMOs really wasting your time? That's quite subjective. In my opinion, wasting time is the time a new player has to spend to get to the fun part of the game. And this fun part can be anything from fun activities while leveling, to harder content like like raiding or PvP. Once you get to this fun part, how long does it stay fun before you have to progress even further beyond? Think in terms of grinding gear or reputation farming. Because the fun you have while playing the game should be the true end game. This content or prestige should not be given to the player, it must be earned. However, it does not have to be tedious to achieve. A while ago, Josh Strife Hayes, a very popular MMO YouTuber, made an excellent video explaining this issue. In his It Gets Better After 100 Hours video, Josh explains that many players suggest that a game or MMO should be at least played for 100 hours or more before it actually gets fun. Josh contradicts these statements. He also states, if a game takes more than 100 hours to get fun, then there must be a flaw in the early game design. And also, it vastly underestimates the free time a player has. In this video, I want to give my thoughts on the following. What is time to the average player? How long should it take before a game actually gets fun? How can a game stay fun and keep you excited? And what is a solution to this problem? And also, let's look how the current MMOs are holding up. Let's dig into the first question. What is time for the average MMO player? Let's look at two scenarios. You are a student on a three week break. Sure, you got a couple things to wrap up during that break, but for the rest, you are free to do whatever you want. Plenty of time to invest into a new MMO. Let's call these the freedom players since they have a lot of free time to play a game. And on the other hand, we have a full-time mom or dad with a daytime job. After work and finishing other responsibilities, you have little time to invest into an MMO. You might only have one or two hours to play a day, with a little more on the weekends. Let's call this group the occupied players. And over the last years, you see that MMOs are really trying to cater to both groups. Or well, they mostly want to cater to the occupied players. The reason why... That's where the money is. The occupied players want to get the most out of their time and don't mind spending a good amount to get the most value for their time. Keep in mind, this does not apply to all occupied players. They work full time and want to play the game where the fun is. And this fun can be found at max level or maybe in getting cool cosmetics for your character. These players can end up buying max level boosters or cosmetics. And this creates a split between players. The freedom players have invested a good amount of time into the game and know the mechanics of their class and the game. The occupied players have a decent understanding of the game and could buy their way up to max level. These two players will eventually end up in the same group and will probably get frustrated at each other. The player that has invested a lot of time into the game gets frustrated because the other player can't keep up. 
And now let's say both player groups are ready to fight a raid boss. The freedom player is familiar with the mechanics he has done and seen the mechanic a dozen times while leveling. The occupied player might have seen this boss's mechanic once, but still has to get used to it. This might create a difference in understanding, which will lead to miscommunication. And this can result in the failure of the raid encounter, which leaves both players dissatisfied. The freedom player will create groups with higher requirements to filter new and less experienced players out. The occupied player won't be able to progress and will eventually get bored, left out or quit the game. This will create a divide between the two player groups. But is this the occupied player's fault? No, not at all. This player wants to get the most out of their free time. And this player also does not want to play through 10 years of old content just to get to the fun part. The player is not wrong, the game is wrong. The game should not allow the player to use that boost. And also, the early game gameplay should be more exciting and refreshing, so the occupied player doesn't have to use the boost in the first place. The bottom line here is that the occupied player has to spend less time but more money into the game to get to the actual fun. And in most cases this will not give them the satisfaction or fun they are looking for. As an occupied player you want to progress slowly, just make your way through the story and the rest of the game. Don't look at what other players are doing, try to have fun with lower level content. But what if this lower level content does not give you the fun you are looking for? How long should you keep playing a game before you can actually determine if the game is fun or not? I'd say give it 10 hours. And I don't mean play 10 hours through boring content and make your judgement based on that. I mean start playing the game for 2 hours and see if you like the game. Do you think it's alright after 2 hours? Play another 3. And make your verdict after about 10 hours. A game will not hand you all the fun in the first 2 hours and not even in the first 10 hours. You need something to work towards, a journey of some sort. Set small goals for yourself. I honestly don't think a player should play for hours on end to get to the fun part. We all have better things to do. More modern MMOs like Guild Wars 2 and Retail World of Warcraft have better and newer content at level 80. When new players hear about this, they skip the leveling journey of the game. Luckily, leveling in games like Guild Wars 2 doesn't take too long. You can hit level 80 in less than a day if you are somewhat familiar with the game. If not, it can take you just a few days. I personally experience a quitting point whenever I'm playing a new MMO. Let's say that the max level of this MMO is level 80. I usually experience this quitting point between level 50 and level 60. This should be around the 10 hour mark that I've mentioned before. At this level the game has shown me the ropes and gave me a general direction of where it is going. If the content gets too repetitive and the content feels really outdated I tend to lose attention. The outdated content part is actually something I can see through. Repetitiveness is a true mood killer for me. I can see through a lot of flaws, but if they keep occurring, we end up at a quitting point. And we really want to avoid that quitting point. And this brings me to another point, what does a game need to do to keep me and you guys excited? It's simple, just give us new things. Just keep pumping new things at us. In moderation of course. Let's say you have just started a game, you understand the basics and you are set out on your adventure. You accept quests and complete them. You do this half a dozen times, reach level 20 or 30 and then bam, there's something new. A new storyline, a plot twist, a new mechanic for your class. Just something to spice up gameplay that you've seen by now. If you introduce something to spice things up around that quitting point, level 50 or 60 that I've mentioned before, I'm sure you can keep players interested for a longer period of time. In addition to the introduction of new things, I'm convinced that tweaking older areas will also improve the new player experience. Especially in MMOs that have been on the market for a while. Many MMO advertisements promote new features that new players can't play yet. Also, there are tons of ads that focus on getting new players to sign up for their game. However, in most cases, the earlier areas are outdated. They were great when the game was released 10 to 15 years ago, but now they don't really meet today's standards anymore. Many people consider this a flaw in the game's marketing, but honestly, it's more a flaw in the game's design and their analytics team. The marketing team had one assignment, make ads that appeal to new players and let them sign up. The marketing team will most likely succeed at this. But what are the next steps? 
Does the analytics team look at how long a newly signed up player plays through the early parts of the game? And how does this compare to data of a couple years ago? If they can conclude that these new players quit before level 20, then they must have encountered something that was not enjoyable to them. These are numbers we will never ever see, but I do wonder about these things. Anyway, this topic deserves its own video. But to summarize, surprise the player with new, unexpected things. And also take a look at the player retention of newer players. Where do they quit? You found a spot? Optimize it. And I've mentioned this before, but there is one thing I'm not a fan of in MMOs, leveling boosters. These things are handed out too early to newer players. Usually these new players are able to use the booster and hop straight into the max level content, but these players are not properly thought to play their class or the game's mechanics. Sure, they are given a 10 minute introduction about their class and the game. However, this does not compensate for the leveling journey, which can take you days or weeks. The player gets bombarded with new skills, gear and mechanics that the player has no understanding of. This leaves a gap in the player's understanding of the game. You will reach max level early, but you will spend the next 5 to 10 hours digging through countless guides or videos. Not fun. This is something that could have been avoided by letting the player actually play the game. And once again, is the player at fault here for buying the boost or getting the boost? No, I don't think so. The advertisement said that the fun was at level 80. Why not get a quick boost to level 80 then? The game should not have given the option to boost a character. I think the boost problem can easily be avoided by disallowing new players to use a boost on their first character. Let them first level up a character the way it was intended. If they want to create another character and boost that after their other character reaches max level, why not let them? They have a decent understanding of the game now. Letting a player play the game as it was intended respects their time much more than using a level boost to get to max level. Like I've said, don't let players boost their character and let them read up on guides or YouTube videos afterwards. Now I'd like to go over a number of MMOs and see how they are holding up. Keep in mind, this is subjective, somewhat biased and brief. How are these games respecting your time and are they wasting your time? Let's kick it off with Guild Wars 2. Of course, I might be a bit biased since I've been playing this game for years and it's still my favorite MMO to date. Guild Wars 2 has this flat progression system while leveling your character. This is different compared to other MMOs. This means that the time it takes to level up for each level is about the same. Getting those last few levels takes about the same time as the earlier levels. This was the core of the leveling system back in the day and it still applies to this day. In addition to that, there aren't many gear treadmills or time gated activities in Guild Wars 2. The highest gear stat available is Ascended Gear and this should be accessible for everyone that is willing to put a few hours into the game. Well, there is legendary armor, but that does not give you better stat combinations. There are some time gated activities like the sky skill collection or the provisioner tokens required for legendary armor. However, these are activities that the average player won't really encounter and even then it's not that tedious. So I think Guild Wars 2 does pretty well. World of Warcraft performs worse if it comes to respecting your time. One of the things that bug me the most are the endless treadmills for gear that becomes obsolete after 3 months. I've tried keeping up with the gear and farming, but I had to invest so much time into dailies and world quests that I eventually gave up. Also, the never-ending progression systems like the Heart of Azeroth in Battle for Azeroth created such a big threshold for me. Your heart could always be higher and better, you could keep on grinding for days to progress the damn thing. The leveling experience in World of Warcraft is considerably longer compared to Guild Wars 2. But that is not a bad thing, leveling in World of Warcraft feels like an experience and less of a chore. Definitely if you do it for the first time. I had so much fun in doing so. The progression systems definitely make the game less enjoyable. And this is a shame since it is arguably one of the best games ever created. RuneScape is very subjective when it comes to time. It can be a chore to level up the last levels of your character. However, minimal input of the player is required in order to do so. You can easily let your character attack or fish while you tap out to watch some Netflix. It might not be the fastest way, but it sure is easy. Although the leveling and progression systems in old school RuneScape aren't really comparable to the more recent MMOs, it's still very enjoyable. That's probably the reason why there are so many people still playing it. 
simply because the barrier to entry is very low. It's easy to understand and a part of the game is free. If you are playing old school runescape just to get 99 attack or 99 wood cutting, then I'd say you are wasting your time. But if you do this with a clear goal in mind, for example, I want 60 wood cutting to do a particular quest, or I'm doing it to earn in-game money to progress in another skill, then it makes a lot of sense. It really depends on the goal or journey you set for yourself. And if you want to invest the time to pursue those goals, the game's formula works. It has been there for 20 years and people are still playing it. Black Desert Online is a hard one for me. Although the game's combat and environment are mesmerizing, some of the systems in the game are extremely time consuming. As I've mentioned in my review, the game's quests let you walk back and forth between cities numerous times. Sure, you get a speed boost and you are able to toggle auto run, but what's the point of auto running for 10 to 20 minutes? I honestly feel that is a waste of time. In my review, I already propose to recreate these quests or remove them entirely. They add so little to the gaming experience. I also thought that leveling was fun. However, after you get awakened at level 56, leveling becomes a grind. It is at this point that Black Desert goes from MMORPG to hack and slash RPG. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you are into grinding mobs for countless hours to gain a single level. For me, that's just not my cup of tea. I still play Black Desert from time to time, but not to spend hours leveling. I'd rather explore. If you are into hack and slashing, you aren't wasting your time at all. But for me personally, I'd rather spend my time somewhere else. And now the last MMO, New World. And this is an odd one since it hasn't been released for that long. And also it did not have the best launch ever. However, I think in a few months time or even a year from now, most issues that we've seen at launch will be solved. In my opinion, New World is not overly grindy. Crafting seems all right, leveling seems okay as well. It does, however, have some of the flaws that Black Desert has as well. For some quests, you have to spend a considerable amount of time walking back and forth between areas or outposts. That's alright if you have to do that a couple times, but during my last 2 hour play session I found myself doing this most of the time. Not my favorite activity and could be considered a waste of time. Also, many enemies I fought at level 10, I still encounter at level 30, which makes the game feel somewhat repetitive. I feel there is still room for improvement here, however, I need to play the game a bit more to give an informed opinion about that. So what do you think? Do you agree with the points I've made in this video? I tried to structure my thoughts and opinions as well as possible. Got anything to add? Leave it in the comments. Consider checking out my other videos about Guild Wars 2 and MMOs, and subscribe for more content like this. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.